Hey guys, welcome to The Art of Conversation with Arti Anglais. I'm your host Tara and today I'm back answering some questions from Conversation Starters website. And today what I've done is I've used a number generator in Google to help me decide what number questions I'm going to answer. And I've come up with three questions and I've got them in front of me. And actually, I think they're a little bit more complicated. So I think I could even make one of my questions into a whole episode, but I'm going to try and answer them as naturally and off the, t off the top of my head as possible. So what I'm also going to try and do is something that I've noticed that I do a lot recently is I say I like or I really like a lot. So I'm going to try and vary the way that I say it and I'm going to use some different expressions to say how I like something or what I like. So see if you can hear how I talk about what I like. So the first question is, does technology simplify life or make it more complicated? So this is a question that I think could definitely be an entire podcast episode, but I'm going to try and answer it in about a minute or two. So I'm not really a big fan of complicated things in life. I really like my life to be simple. I'm a big fan of keeping it simple, keeping it simple stupid. So for me, I believe that technology is something that is starting to take over our lives a little bit. And so the more developed technology is becoming, the more we become obsessed with it and the more we feel like it needs to help our lifestyle and to help our life. So I want to give you an example of something that happened to me today. It's not about technology as such, but it's kind of an analogy for how I think life is going. So I went to the supermarket and I went to the big supermarket near my house and for me there was so many things going on there were so many people there was so many choices they had these little handheld devices that you could use to um, scan when you put it in your trolley so when you get to the end when you get to the the cash register all of the things in your trolley are scanned however I kept walking past these people and the scanning devices were not working and they had to get people to help them and it just wasn't working for them. It didn't seem to be working. And so I think sometimes these things make our lives more complicated than they really need to be. And then on the other hand too, the thing about being at the supermarket was also making me think about how we've made things so complicated. So for example, you walk down one aisle and there's about 30,000 different toilet paper brands to choose from. So I feel like we're given too much choice. And so in the same way, I feel like technology has given us a lot of choice. However, I think there are some Obviously, there are some circumstances where technology makes our life more simple and, rather than complicated. So, for example, the technology with trams allows us to take public transport more easily than taking a car, for example. Um, it doesn't just have to be, you know, about computers and things like that. So, I guess computers do make your life more simple in that you can store all of your information in one place. But at the same time, things like having to remember all your passwords and having to, having to think about all the different apps that you can use for things on your phone, I think it really makes our life so complicated sometimes. So I'm in two, two schools of thought with this one. I think technology can make your life complicated but it can also make it simple and I think it's about balancing and knowing when technology when using more advanced technology is better than than not using something that's more advanced for example I actually have a friend who still has a very simple Nokia 
telephone. It doesn't have a color screen, nothing. And he just uses his phone to get text messages. And I really love that idea because his life is so much less complicated. He doesn't feel the need to Google everything all the time. He just uses his phone to, to call people and send text messages. And we often have conversations about how much more simple, how much simpler his life is. Okay, so like I said, I think that question could be answered in an entire podcast episode. I'd love to hear what you guys think about whether technology makes your life complicated or makes it simple. Okay, next question is, what's the most underrated TV show? Well, this one's hard too because I think everyone has different tastes. But for me, I'm really keen on shows that make me think and make me question things and, and make me think a lot more about society and and what's happening politically and what's happening culturally, all those sorts of things. So I'm a really big fan of the TV show or it's the TV series on Netflix called Black Mirror. If you're not sure what Black Mirror is, it's basically a TV show which kind of explores a world where we have high-tech um, gadgets and and a lot of developed technology like what we we're talking about before and there's often a lot of scenarios which are very close to reality but they haven't quite happened yet and so I'm a big fan of this TV show because it really makes me think a lot about about what would happen if this would happen um, there was an episode uh, in the, I think it was in the third series of Black Mirror, and it was about um, Twitter and and hashtags and people were dying as a result of people using a particular hashtag, and um, it was there was a big investigation, but it made me think how close to reality it can sometimes sometimes be and it was challenging things like bullying and and calling people out on what they do so I really like Black Mirror I think it's underrated and if you haven't watched it yet watch episodes it's really good because the episodes are not related so you don't have to have watched one episode to watch the next episode so it's really good in that in that way okay and the last question for today is do movies have the same power as books to change the world? Now, this one's to me, is interesting because I think it depends on the type of person that you are. But for me, I'm going to answer it in, in, my, in the way that I would answer it. So I'm also a big fan of movies that make me think a lot and make me think more about society and, and what's happening. So for me, on one hand, movies are good because they're visual and they can appeal to your emotions. Um, and I think it's easier to appeal to people's emotions more in, in a more impactful way when you, when you see it on a movie. Um, I think of movies like, uh, what's a good movie? Uh, Schindler's List is a movie for me, that I think had more of an impact than the book, just because I was seeing the images and you get more of a taste of what would have happened in reality. And even though it wasn't a nice, it wasn't nice to see what happened in the movies. It was kind of a good example of how movies how it can have more of an impact on your emotions. And movies like Blade Runner have that same impact on me, I think. The moving images have more power. Um, and then the other thing is, too, you can, when you in a movie, you can have um, the music and you can have that as a background to the images and the dialogues and everything. So everything is kind of working together to have more of an impact on you. There was a movie that I saw, I can't remember how long ago it was, it would have been after 2010, 
uh, called Sam Samsara, and it was a movie where it was just moving images, and you saw lots of different places around the world, the Himalayas, um, pilgrimages. It was just movies, and to me, that had such a big impact on me wanting to find out more about certain events and certain places in the world. So I did a lot more research after I watched that movie. So for me, that was kind of interesting. But on the other hand, I think you have books, which if you're more, if you're a person that has more of imagination or you, you like to you know, go somewhere to read a book and, and really delve into a little world, I think books encourage you to have an imagination and you can also read books anywhere and you can pick it up and put it down and read the words over and over and over and and start to see what the message is in the book or lots of different things. And for me, I think the perfect example of this is, I know it's a little bit, it's not super adult, but... Harry Potter was a great example of a TV, uh, sorry, a movie series and a book series, which for me, I much more, I preferred much more as the book series because I was able to use my imagination more and I was able to read certain bits over and over. And, and for me, I was able to, to think more about how the certain characters fit into the storylines and things like that. I'm not sure that I would explain Harry Potter as being a a book series that changed the world, but in 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 another way, I think it did change the world. I think it became, um, it it gave kids this this idea that um, this whole other world could exist and they could use their imagination and, and things like that. So I think, yeah, on the other hand, books can have the ability to change the world. But I think if I was to choose one, I would say that movies definitely have more of an emotional impact. Um, And I would think sort of movies like E.T.'s had a massive, you know, that's changed the world dramatically. It's, It's a very iconic film that... It's not just the only iconic film, but it's one iconic film, like a Steven Spielberg film. It's so iconic. Okay, I think that's it for me. I think I've talked enough. It's probably getting over my 10 minutes. Um, What I want you to do is, in today's episode, I want you to see different ways that I have used um, or different expressions that I've used instead of I like to express something that I like. Well, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed that little short conversation question answers. Obviously, it's very hard to answer some of these questions in only 10 minutes. So I might have to think about possibly making longer episodes into some of these questions because they're really good. You'll hear from me again this Thursday when I release my next podcast episode, which is all about how to write an artist statement. So what I would like to do is to read on the podcast some of your artist statements uh, so I can find out what you do and see what some of the creative people that listen to this podcast like to do. Obviously, if you're not an artist, that's okay too. You can listen to the podcast episode. I'll be talking a little bit about things that you should include and talking about writing in the active voice and using first person and some of the tools that I use to do my own writing. So I look forward to sharing that episode with you then and I'll catch you later guys. Bye.